My name is Andy Link. I'm an instructor for PetroSkills and I teach the basic petroleum geology course. We cover a wide variety of topics in the basic petroleum geology course. I consider it in many respects to be a vocabulary lesson so that people who are not geologists can understand what geologists are saying and also makes it more effective for them to talk to two geologists. One of the topics that we cover is plate tectonics. Plate tectonics is where we divide the outer layer of the earth up into a number of individual plates, 15 different plates as a matter of fact, that are moving across the surface of the earth. And so if you consider the specific definition of, petro, of plate tectonics, the division of the lithosphere into a number of rigid plates that move horizontally across the surface of the earth. The plates interact with each other at their margins, causing seismic and tectonic activity at their margins. The seismic activity is related to the uh, production of earthquakes. The tectonic activity is related to the building of mountains. The things that we want the people to take away from this particular session is that there are three kinds of plate margins. We have the divergent plate margin, the transform plate margin, and the convergent margin. We need to understand the kinds of rocks that we find at each one of the plate margins, and then we also want to recognize the structural styles, or basically the deformation of the rocks that we find at the plate margins. So if we consider the overall structure of the Earth itself, take a very simplified look at the internal structure of the Earth. We have a core, which is very, very hot, and it's uh, 6,000 degrees or more, with selected hot spots scattered around it, related most likely to radioactivity within the core. Sitting on top of that, you have the uh, convection cells in the mantle, which has more plastic behavior, and so those convec we have convection cells that are related to the individual hot spots within the core. Those convection cells cause rising material in the mantle to encounter the uh, outermost layer of the earth and it tends to pull things apart as you can see from the diagram. So that means what we're doing is since we're stretching the, the crust of the earth and adding more material to it, that means that the earth is getting larger and we know that that's not the case. So we have to take a look over in places where material from the outermost layer of the earth is being pushed back down into the subsurface, back into the mantle, such that we can maintain the constant volume of the earth that we have. As a result of this activity, especially where we have the spreading center where things are pulling apart, if we take a look at a map of the Atlantic Basin, you'll notice that the deep, you'd normally expect the deepest part of the basin to be where you have, would be out in the middle. That's not the case. It's actually among the shallowest places on the Atlantic Ocean. We have a mountain range that runs from Iceland all the way down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean until we get down to the southern tip of South Africa. Then that mountain range takes a curve to the east, goes into the Indian Ocean, and then goes uh, through the Indian Ocean, works its way over towards Australia, goes under Australia, that is between Australia and Antarctica, and then it comes up in the Pacific as an East Pacific rise. That East Pacific rise combined with the other mountain ranges in uh, the Atlantic Basin as well as the Indian Ocean, that mounts, amounts to a 36,000 mile long subsea mountain range. And all of that is related to the pull apart of the basins and so that would be one of the three kinds of margins or the divergent margin. And we explain that in considerable detail. We also, since we're creating brand new crust along the divergent margin, we have to consume that crust or some of the older crust somewhere else. And so what we do is we look for the subduction zones. The subduction zones are places where we sho shove the continental or the crustal material back down into the mantle. 
And so that's going to occur where we have trench systems within the Earth's uh, basins. And so if we take a look at the Pacific Basin, by far the majority of the uh, trench systems are in the Pacific Basin. We do have one over in the Java Trench, and we also have another one over in the Puerto Rico Trench. Other than that, everything else is in the Pacific Basin. So that is the way that we maintain the constant volume of the Earth. This is a look at the plates, the 15 plates that we have on the surface of the Earth. We have a number of different margins. We have the divergent margin, the convergent margin, and the transform margin. These plates are the most recent ones. They've been around for about the past 200 million years. If you go back in time, you will find that plates have uh, basically been broken up in some cases, and so you're not dealing with the same original plates, although pretty much there is a constant center with margins that are subject to change. And so therefore the plate distribution is going to change over time. As an example, if you take a look at the North American plate, the North American plate was actually well south of the equator if you go back about 400 million years ago or 500 million years ago. One of the things that we show related to this is that we have a video that runs about almost four minutes and it shows the movement of the plates starting today and going back in time some 750 million years. If you were to start 750 million years ago and come forward in time, you would not recognize the map that you would see from 750 million years ago. The plates are, uh, the continents and the plates are distributed differently back then, and so it's not a map that you would recognize at all. So what we do with that video is we start today, we go back 750 million years ago, then we come forward in time that 750 million years a little bit more leisurely, stopping a number of places to take a look at how the continental arrangement at any particular time, how it affected the petroleum potential that we have in the area. Here's a map of the different kinds of uh, boundaries that you have between the plates the divergent margin which we've mentioned before where things are pulling apart the transform margin where things are sliding horizontally past each other such as the san andreas system that you have in california and then you also have the convergent margin which is what you have in the trench system uh, all pretty much mostly around the pacific if we take a look at a divergent margin where things are pulling apart. That's where we create that subsea mountain system that we mentioned to you before. That's the 36,000 mile long system. And so if we take a look at uh, the breaking up of South America and Africa and the splitting apart between North America and Eurasia, that's where the pull apart. So that is going to be a divergent margin, which ultimately gives us that mountain range under the uh, Atlantic Ocean and coming up into the Indian Ocean. If we take a look at a modern system where we have a divergent margin above sea level that we can see, we would have to take a look at the Somali plate and Eastern Africa pulling away from the rest of the African continent. Notice the V's in there, those are volcanic sites, and so you have Mount Kenya, you have uh, Mount Kilimanjaro over here, you have uh, Angoro, Angoro over here, and you have Kivu over in here. So we're pulling apart the Somali plate. This plate is moving to the lower right. The rest of Af relative to uh, speaking, we have the rest of Africa moving up towards the northwest. Here's a uh, cloud, fuzzy day, not particularly clear, but nonetheless, you can see Kilimanjaro in the background, and we have a giraffe here who is supervising what's going on. If we take a look at some of the lakes associated with the Somali plate pulling apart, you can see that we have uh, the dissolved oxygen content in the lake itself, Lake Tanganyika, which can be fairly deep, more than 400 meters. And so you'll see that about 100 to, at about a depth of 100 meters or so, pretty much you have zero dissolved oxygen left in the water column. 
There is no circulation between the deeper portions and the shallow portions because we have a thermocline right here where you have the warm water sitting up on top of the cold water and so therefore there is no interchange between the two. The fact that you have this zero oxygen content below 100 meters, that means that any sediments, any muds and so on that accumulate at great depths below 100 meters the organic matter is going to be preserved. It's not going to be lost to oxidation. As a result, this is a potential for making source rock, which could be useful a few, hundred million, or a few million years into the future. If we take a look at more divergence, we have here the Arabian Peninsula. The Arabian Peninsula is moving off towards the northwest, closer and moving into Iran. We have the Arabian Peninsula moving to the northeast into Iran, which the collision of those two continents, has, uh, continental masses, has created the Zagros Mountains over here in southwestern Iran. In front of that, or towards the southwest, we have the Arabian Gulf right in here, and that gulf is uh, a trench that is basically 20,000 feet deep over 20,000 feet deep, but is all filled with sediments. So the gulf in here only has a depth of maybe two or 300 feet, not very much. Notice that on the western side of the Arabian Peninsula, we have the Red Sea over in here, and so that is a zone of separation. That is a divergent margin there, so that's what's allowing the Arabian Peninsula to slide off towards the northeast and give us the Zagros Mountains. If we continue the separation between the Arabian Peninsula and Egypt, what you'll wind up with is a much wider body of water than what we see in the Red Sea. So we're making new continental crust under the Red Sea, and as that gets wide enough, basically we'll wind up with an Atlantic or a basin that's the size of the Atlantic Basin, if not larger. And so we could compare that to North America over here on the west and Europe over here on the east. Iceland is right along that mid-Atlantic ridge and it's exposed above sea level. So what we were looking at, if we come back to this map right here, here's Iceland up here. We have the mid-Atlantic ridge coming to the southwest there. Then there's a displacement to the east and then it continues on down the length of the Atlantic Ocean. We also have the transform margin. The transform margin is where things slide horizontally past each other. Best example of that is going to be the uh, San Andreas Fault System that we have in California. And so we just have the western side of the San Andreas Fault sliding to the north. The eastern side appears to be moving to the south. And so that's the, we call the transform margin because we start out with a divergent margin that is transformed into a fault and then that is transformed again. It's transformed right here into a fault and then it transforms back again into the divergent margin that continues uh, farther to the south. If we take a look at another system, we have the Caribbean plate over here. The Caribbean plate is moving off to the east relative to South America down here. And so that uh, Caribbean plate, we used to have a, uh, a delta coming up here for the Orno Orinoco River, but that has been forced over to the east to its current position over in here. So plate tectonics can actually move things around quite a bit. And as a result of that Caribbean plate moving off to the east, we had the delta deposit from the Magdalena River over in Colombia off the picture to the left-hand side that delta has since moved over into Venezuela. So it's interesting that the delta, which was deposited originally in Colombian waters, is now sitting over in uh, Venezuela. They have benefited from that. The Orinoco River used to essentially run pretty much north-south towards the Caribbean plate, but because of the movement of this mountain range that's been coming in from the left-hand side, it has been pushed over to the east, so the Orinoco Delta is now over here. And the deltaic deposits from that have been uh, good for the per, uh, petroleum production from Venezuela, but that's also where the Trinidad gets a lot of its petroleum production is from that Orinoco Delta. Okay, that's a quick look. We've seen the first two uh, 
types of plate boundaries, the transform boundary and the divergent boundary. Here's a picture of the, of the San Andreas Fault. You can certainly see right up the middle here where the fault is, it's fairly obvious. The right hand side is sliding to the south relative to the west left hand side which is moving up towards the north closer to San Francisco. This is the interior of the San Andreas Fault. You can see all the folding and the disruption of the sedimentary rocks that are there. And so it's these kinds of structures that we're interested in and the uh, Californians produce from some of those structures in there. If we take a look at uh, the, a portion of the San Andreas system around Los Angeles, you see a whole series of fields going at basically right up through the city of Los Angeles and so uh, there's production from each one of those fields in through there. Then we have the convergent margin where things are coming together. And so this is what it looks like where things come together. One plate is forced under the other one. And as it goes deeper and deeper into the subsurface, then what does it do? It breaks up. And so you're seeing the breakup down in through here. And so this plate here is now going to be on top of this one as this one is forced under. Things are uh, getting hotter as you go deeper and as a result you get melting in this area right in through here and you get volcanism which is going to bring volcanic material to the surface and so that's why the whole western side of South America has volcanic activity because it's related to something like this. Okay, that's just a quick summary of what we can see from plate tectonics. We'll continue with something else.